Hi, Lynn. Welcome. How are you? I'm good, Ian. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Very good indeed. Thanks so much for, for, for joining us. Um, from, uh, I think at the moment, whereabouts are you in across the US? I am in northern Minnesota right now at my cabin. It looks beautiful from the from the background behind you. So thanks so much for, for joining <laughs> us today. Um, you and I have spoken quite a lot over the last couple of weeks, and um, Flex uh, is kind of a really interesting organisation um, that we are proud to have as a member at Procurement Leaders. Um, I just want to start really though by asking you a little bit about uh, about Flex and about about your role. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for letting me be here today. So Flex is a $24 billion multinational contract manufacturer and supply chain services provider. We operate in 30 countries and we support over a thousand valued customers. And with that, we manage about a million component SKUs and we work very closely with approximately 16,000 suppliers to manage that supply chain. And we have uh, about 10,000 supply chain professionals working within the Flex organization to uh, support our customers and our suppliers. And we operate at scale across multiple industries, healthcare, automotive, cloud, communications, energy, industrial, lifestyle, and consumer devices. So, uh, quite a complex global supply chain organization. And I am the chief procurement and supply chain officer. I joined uh, Flex last October. And as chief procurement and supply chain officer, I'm responsible for our direct and indirect materials, transportation and logistics, business operations, materials management, and strategic supply chain management. Uh, and it was interesting, I, I had been with a company called Avnet, an electronic components distributor for 25 years, and had done a variety of different roles uh, at that organization when the opportunity to join Flex came about, which was very exciting. I felt it was a great next step in my career. I had actually been uh, supporting Flex, was one of the customers that I was responsible for, as well as a number of the competitors to Flex. And I worked very closely with the semiconductor suppliers. So it seemed like a nice transition for me, a nice next step in my career, and an opportunity to bring my skill set and knowledge base to the Flex organization. Absolutely. And it was a yeah, very interesting time, uh, you know, a few months uh, to get to know the Flex, the organization, the team. It's a great culture, great company, thrilled to be there. Um, and it's been an exciting journey. And, I'm actually coming up on my one year anniversary on October 1st. Perfect. Thanks for the overview there, because you, know, you and I spoke about kind of setting the scene and the context for, for your role really there, because I think you have a unique um, story as, as, which kind of helps to give the context to the work that's been done over the last year, given you know, for any, any seasoned chief procurement officer, it, it's enough to deal with a global pandemic. When you're new in seat somewhere, there's, there's a different nuance that comes with that as well. Um, so Flex is widely kind of recognised as having a very advanced global procurement and supply chain function. Can you tell us about how you address kind of those key issues that the pandemic threw at the organisation? Sure. Um, yeah, it was, in, in, like you said, I was new to the organisation. I have a really strong leadership team. Um, so really when it first, if we go back to like mid-January, when we first heard about the, this outbreak of the coronavirus, um, we formed a, a, a daily call with, with my direct reports, as well as a number of people, um, other cross-functional teams that were on, on that call, um, just to assess the situation, understand what we were hearing from local governments, from our suppliers, from our customers, and, and to, to make those decisions. And one of the first things we did very early on um, in mid-January was we sourced personal protection equipment for our employees. We always had the focus that we needed to focus on our employees as well as then our customers and our suppliers. And in a very short amount of time, we went from you know, zero masks for our employees to 60 days of supply for our 60,000 60, employees in, in China. So there was focus on our employee safety, but then also you know, how can we mitigate our supply chain risk? And 
those, I think those daily calls were very, very important. They were actually at 5.30 in the morning, my time, which was a bit of a challenge. I'm not typically a morning person, but I have since learned how to become a morning person. Um, but we, it was my global team on the, on the call. And in those discussions, we were able to kind of make decisions to understand how to mitigate uh, the impact to our production, to our customers, as well as how we can work closely with our suppliers. One of the first things that we actually did um, was we put a flag on all parts that had country of origin China to stop our system from pushing out or canceling any of those orders until we had some time to work with our suppliers to understand the impact that they were having. And we asked for a reconfirmation of all of the purchase orders that we had opened with them. So working very closely with the customers to for their forecast, making sure the demand was real and true, and then working very closely with our supply base as, as they were able to give us that information. And at the very beginning, it was it was very challenging. There were suppliers who were not able to get back to the office. They they could not get, provide us with the information that we needed. Um, so we but we did work very closely with with our suppliers until they were able to manage that. Um, you know, reconfirmation of the orders for us to be able to confirm production. We also had the ability to to move inventory uh, around the world as needed to to manage you know the the production schedules that we had. And one of the benefits that we really have at at Flex is our pulse system. So a real time supply chain. Uh, cloud-based platform that gives us visibility across our entire organization down to the part number and site and customer impact. Um, so we, we used that really advanced supply chain visibility to, to make those decisions and to help us uh, with managing through the pandemic. No, thanks for that, that insight. And you, you mentioned there that there were lessons learned um, from your initial response in China that actually helped to, to inform strategy in some of those other geographical locations uh, as kind of the, the pandemic spread. So uh, could you talk a little bit about that in, in some more detail for us? Absolutely. So we had, um, you know, in China, our employees were on uh, Chinese New Year's. They weren't back to the factory when it first started. So we had our crisis response team. We figured out exactly how to safely reopen the factories and, and protect the employees. Um, and as the pandemic moved across the world and we had uh, factories shut down and reopened, we used those lessons learned to make, make sure we were prepared. And we worked very closely with governmental authorities as we were reopening you know, our factories and safely bringing our workforce uh, back to work. We also managed the same activity um, from the supply chain as different countries were impacted and their uh, factories were shut down. We did the flag in the system. We worked closely with the suppliers to understand, you know, when they would be able to produce, what the potential impact would be. And, you know, just kind of followed that framework as we went, uh, as the pandemic spread across the world so that we really would be able to be in a, a good position to quickly ramp up and get back to production when that happened. And one of the interesting uh, things that we did during those daily calls uh, we were having a discussion uh, about the potential border closures in Europe or delays in in moving inventory because not it wasn't just getting the the product from the suppliers it was working very closely with our logistics providers to make sure that we would be able to to move the inventory. So when we heard about some of the potential border crossing delays, potential border closures. We, we talked as a team, we thought, said, oh, we have all of our PPE for European sites in a hub in Hungary that we would move to the sites as needed. So we, make, we made that decision in, in advance of, of the border delays and closures to move all that PPE to the sites um, in advance of having any impact. And I think part of you know, that, that message there is we had our supply chain professionals making smart decisions with the information they had available to them. It was imperfect information. It changed very rapidly. Um, and what I would tell my team is, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to make these decisions. We have to be quickly. I want to hear everybody's voice, everybody's opinion. Um, 
but we have to go fast. So we came up with the term discuss, debate, decide. And that's what we did in, in making those decisions. But I think really what it came down to is, as I said, supply chain professionals making intelligent decisions with the information they had available to them. Oh, that's fantastic. I like that discuss, debate, decide there. That sounds very much a procurement leader's type of session we'd run as well. It's great. <laughs> um, with those lessons uh, learned, though, um, we learn so much out of kind of the adversity and issues that, that, we do, that we do face. How do you identify them, document them, um, share those weaknesses to ensure that procurement um, is continuing to provide that, that uh, level of value delivery? And we we did that right from the very beginning. You know, we identified, for instance, um, when we when we said, okay, we have country of origin China parts potentially being impacted coming out of Wuhan. That wasn't good enough information for us. I, we we had country of origin information in our system because it was necessary for tariffs and and what have you, but we didn't really have that real geographic breakdown that we needed to have to understand which suppliers would truly be impacted and which ones uh, might not be. So immediately we did an update to our, our supplier relationship management system, you know, went out and, and gathered more geographic information. And even on that, the very beginning, when we said we reached out to our suppliers and asked them to reconfirm uh, their open purchase orders, it probably took us 48 hours to gather the appropriate names at all of our suppliers. It was about 10,000 suppliers in the initial push to China where we needed to gather that information. And while we had that for you know our preferred suppliers and some of our larger suppliers, we did not have that information throughout our entire supply base. So that was another one where we said, okay, now we need to get more robust information as part of our crisis management plan going forward. And then, uh, you know, certainly um, a challenge since then ha as well has been, you know, understanding the potential supplier risk and what strategies we have to employ for that, whether it be, you know, financial risk for suppliers moving through the pandemic, visibility into tier two or tier three suppliers, which I think we've all talked about for years uh, that we don't have enough visibility into our supply base. Uh, and typically it comes to light, we, we have a, a, a crisis, you know, whether it be the floods in Thailand, the tsunami in Japan, and we talk about that lack of visibility, but we really haven't made progress in, in really understanding those tier two, tier three suppliers. So that's another focus that we're working on um, at Flex to improve that visibility, working with uh, partners to be able to get more information in our, our risk assessments. Fantastic, thanks for those insights. We're gonna bring um, Jim back in to, jo to join us now. And please do also put some questions in for Lynn. Hopefully they've been coming thick and fast as we've been, we've been talking here. Um, Jim, um, you've been listening in intently to Lynn there. Any reflections um, from you for the session? Yeah, no, sure, Re really uh, great conversation, uh, Lynn, really enjoyed it. Um, um, I thought you kind of reiterated um, uh, some of the points that, that many of us have known for a long time, but many of us have struggled to really kind of address. And the, you know, um, during this, during the challenges that you faced over the past um, uh, seven or eight months, using the insights to make decisions, making sure that all of the people are connected that need to be cross-functionally and within the, within the supply base, re really, really important. Uh, and making those smart decisions around that. But but there's one thing that kind of really strikes me. There's one word we perhaps not talked about enough in this conference, Ian, and that is uh, a real simple one, and that's leadership. And you know what? During a pandemic, it takes leadership to work through it, and it takes all of those kind of facets that we need to be as procurement leaders to, to really kind of get through these challenges and really kind of move on the... Uh, uh, move, move a debate on and really kind of focus on the uh, the execution. And, uh, you know, uh, listening to Lynn there, that came out in, uh, it, it kind of oozed out, um, you know, in, in, in huge quantities, shall I say. 
Uh, thanks, Jim. That's great. We've had some, we've had some, some questions that are coming from the audience then that I, I want to put towards you. Uh, one of those uh, has come in from uh, Luis Alberto Perez Terran. I hope I've not butchered your, uh, the pronunciation of your name there. Um, a procurement at, at Nest Trade, who asks, um, would you please let us know what the technology tool your company is using for visibility? So it's, it's called Pulse. It's our, our system that we've developed. Uh, utilizing information from from all of uh, the systems across the flex organization uh, it it I, I'll say when I was a supplier to flex I would come in and had have data envy um, and now I re realize just how powerful the data is flex has invested in our supply chain mm -hmm. tools for years and that we, we have multiple dashboards that we use to, to run our business um, and they're available on laptops, they're available on, on your phones. We also have uh, nine pulse centers around the world where we have teams of people working in their, you know, a wide screen across a wall where you see all the dashboards that we have. But it's a really powerful tool, especially in times like this. And I, I found that it was something where I felt really an advantage in, in managing through this situation because of those visibility. We actually yeah. built specific COVID um, dashboards to help us manage through through the situation. But it is, um, yeah, it's a very powerful system and the, the ability to drill down to any situation, any shortage, you can see the actions that the team are taking, the results of those actions. So it's, it's very powerful. Yeah, it's a great internal system to have at your fingertips. It's a great resource, absolutely. Um, final question from, from me, um, and thanks so much for, for being here with us. Um, how have your strategic priorities changed as a result? Um, we, we speak to so many um, chief procurement officers at procurement leaders. A lot of organizations were given uh, a kind of a new remit. Some were given very few, like not much of a change, if you, almost, if you like, in order to still deliver mm -hmm. on those those kind of KPIs that you were at and targets you were asked to hit at the beginning of the year are still very much in place with, whilst trying to pivot to some new uh, initiatives. How's that been from, from the Flex perspective? Yeah, it's a great question because it is challenging. I feel like, you know, for months it was kind of head down, just tactically working through the details to get through the pandemic. Now it's uh, the past few weeks, taking a breath, looking strategically forward. Uh, certainly needing, you know, the, the financial metrics, inventory metrics are, are always clear. But everybody's talking about supply chain. You know, six months ago, nobody was, or, you know, nine months ago, people weren't really talking about supply chain. There was just an expectation that it would work. Uh, and historically, supply chains have been built on low cost and efficiency. Now, there's so much talk about regionalization and resiliency. So part of my remit going forward is... Flex is in a fantastic position to be able to help customers with whatever those goals are, whether it's a regionalization strategy, it's a resiliency strategy. Um, so we want to ensure we're developing really robust tools to enable customers to be able to make those uh, decisions on regionalization or resiliency with a clear understanding of the costs associated with those uh, individual strategies, which are, are very unique to every company. So we do have those uh, supply chain tools available and we're, we're continuously enhancing them to provide more valuable information to our customers. Thanks so much for, the, for all your insights and, and Jim for joining us there. Um, that's all unfortunately we have time for. It's been great to, to speak with you. So thank you so much again for, uh, for joining us.